So if a person starves, all right, and basically does not eat at all, yeah, I, I think the cancer will obviously potentially shrink, but the person will die of starvation okay. first. Yeah. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Today, I have the privilege of speaking to Dr. Thomas So, oncologist. He is my good friend since we were together training as junior doctors in Singapore. I want to introduce a new series in my YouTube channel. I call it Misconception. We have a mission to clear up misconception in medicine. But if you are new to my channel, my name is Dr. Tony Sertio Budi, an orthopedic surgeon at Mount Elizabeth Hospital. Our topic today is just sugar feed cancer cells. But let me introduce our speaker, Dr. Thomas So, is an oncologist practicing in Plenigal's Hospital. For details, you can refer to the description below. Welcome to Misconception, Dr. So. Thank you for your time. Does sugar with cancer cells, is it legit or misconception? Dr. So, time is yours. Okay, yeah. thank you, Tony. No All right, so to answer your question, sugar feeds all cells, including cancer cells. Yeah, It feeds all living cells, plant cells, human cells, cancer cells. Yeah, There are research to show that uh, cancer cells feed on more sugar than normal cells. And that is why we use this difference and characteristics right, to do PET scans right, to see cancer cells better on scans. So what happens in a PET scan is they inject glucose, which is a sugar, all right, that is especially prepared right, that will light up on uh, scans. And when they inject the glucose in, all right, the sugar cells, the sugar enters into the uh, cancer cells more readily. And therefore, it will light up right on the scan. Um, now, before everybody gets worried and say, oh, let's not take sugar, sugar will feed the cancer and all that, right? It is important to understand that every cell needs sugar to you know do its uh, function you know it needs sugar to grow it needs sugar to move it needs sugar you know for all daily necessity okay right uh. yeah um so when we do pet scans actually apart from cancer cells lighting up actually the part of the body that takes in the most sugar is actually not the cancer cell it's actually your brain to take that question further, a lot of my patients ask me, so if I don't take sugar, all right, will the cancer die? Is it better? Or if I take too much sugar, is it bad for the cancer? Yeah. So, so to answer this question, all right, now, even if you don't take sugar, all right, the cancer cell will find a way to get sugar on its own. All right. The cancer is like a parasite. Okay. Yep. It will survive at the cost of the host yeah so if we don't take sugar all right what will happen is that our normal cells including our brain will not be able to function obviously mm. all right and even if you know we totally don't take sugar our body will find a way of getting sugar you know from proteins or from fats there are alternative ways of producing sugar from other food sources yeah, that's how dependent we are on sugar for day-to-day -day life. Okay, yeah. and can so, I just interrupt yes. a little bit there? Yes. You, you mentioned that cancer cells, it take up more sugars than normal cells except the brain. Why is that so? Well, cancer is actually a cell. It's a normal cell, but they have uh, basically gone rogue. You know? They have taken a life on their own. And so their mission is actually to survive. Their mission is to grow at the expense of other cells. So they are more active than normal yes. cells. Yes. Okay. So is it dangerous eating sugar for people who have cancer? So like I said, 
uh, the cancer cell will get sugar by whatever means they require. Okay. Now, I think to qualify for that question, it is important for people to take sugar, but it is not good to take too much. Okay. What happens when people take too much sugar? All right. So the excess sugar is then stored as fat. People become obese, all right, or they can actually develop uh, impaired tolerance, right? The sugar level goes up, they have diabetes, and all these are risk factors for cancer itself, if not, you know, causes of potentially making cancer worse. I think I need to ask you specifically, if we take too much sugar, does it make the cancer cells grow bigger, faster, or more dangerous? No, it does not. It does. Yeah, okay. it, it does not. Okay. So can I just summarize that taking too much sugar is not dangerous for the cancer, does not make the cancer bigger, but it's not good for our health in general, right? Yes, that's what right. About, what about if people believe that taking too much sugar can feed the cancer cells and they starve, they don't take sugar, what happened to the cancer cells? So if a person starves, all right, and basically does not eat at all. Yeah, I, I think the cancer will obviously potentially shrink, but the person will die of starvation okay. first. Yeah. So there is a daily requirement that's uh, required for everybody. And that's a daily requirement that we need for our day-to-day -day function. Um, if we compromise on that, then our health begins to suffer. Yeah. And, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't make sense that if your focus is on the cancer only, but your own health suffers. So I usually tell my patients to take a balanced diet, all right, uh, eat widely, all right. There may be certain foods that are restricted during a cancer treatment or with some specific cancers, right. But at the end of the day, eating widely, don't take too much of something which you think is good, all right. Uh, have a balanced diet, drink lots of water. That, that's probably the best advice. Mm. Okay, Thomas, is there any situation where fasting is really useful to maybe halt or reduce the size of the cancer? There are certain mutations associated with some cancers that fasting Intermittent fasting, for example, can help. But at the end of the day, it's probably important for you to discuss with your oncologist whether or not it's useful. For most cancers, it's important to maintain a sensible diet. Before we end, do you have any important one, two sentence to close this? So sugar can feed cancer cell, but it's important that you feed yourself first to make yourself strong enough to fight the cancer. At the end of the day, work closely with your oncologist. He is your partner in fighting the cancer. And he is also the best person to advise you, right, on what you can eat, what you should eat, and what you should do. Thank you so much, Thomas, for your time today. And I really believe that this information is useful for so many people. For those who are watching, thank you so much. And feel free to type your questions and comments and don't forget to subscribe like share this video and i hope to see you again in another exciting misconception series bye